Tall and tan and young and lovely, the girl from <laughs> Oh, hey YouTube. How are you? What's up YouTube? It's Michael and today I have a theory as to why these jeans cost $260 and I would like to let you know that theory. I do want to preface this by saying the pants that I got are too small for me and I know that and you'll see it in the top block. Too small. Oh well, can't wear them. Just another idiot making a YouTube video. So long story short, if you can ignore the fact that they don't fit perfectly, I think we'll get along. Okay, so anyways, these are Levi's LVC 1947 jeans. If you don't know what LVC is, it's Levi's vintage clothing reproduction, and they basically painstakingly reproduce vintage versions of clothes that they had. This is an exact, well, I guess as exact as they can be, we'll get into that in a bit, replica of Levi 501s from 1947. Down to fit, down to denim characteristics, the rivets, the buttons, everything. Although some things just had to change. Also, just so we're all on the same page here, there was a big Levi's fire. I forget when. They basically lost a ton of information. So they didn't have the denim information on hands. Levi's says they don't even know what 501 means. So they had to recreate these jeans from scratch and take existing pairs and try and copy that. Which is also what a lot of raw Japanese denim companies did with Levi's too, and they made reproductions, which we'll get into later. Like sugarcane, is, that's the one we're gonna narrow in on today, and then maybe eventually we'll spread it out. Quick overview before we get into the three specific things, ending with why do these jeans cost so much? Because if you're not in the raw denim world, you're probably like, that's kind of ridiculous. And even if you're in the raw denim world, you may think that's kind of ridiculous. So after the second great world war, these jeans came on the scene, which there was a bunch of differences. One, there were no suspender buttons anymore because people were too cool. They didn't need suspenders. They just belted their pants. There was also no back cinch, which on the type one jacket and on the older Levi's, there was a denim cinch in the back to tighten your pants with the jeans itself. Fun fact, during the war, the R Arcs on the back of Levi's were considered not needed basically and they could save the thread and use it for other reasons so Levi's painted the arcs on the back pockets of the jeans because it was so recognizable to customers. Pretty cool. Oh wow, I like that thought. Okay, now the breakdown. So first things first, these pants you're, you're seeing now not washed. They have not been washed. We will wash them in the middle of the video or at the end of the video I will just say washed and then you'll know that they've been washed. So, you know, if you can follow along, that'd be great if you could pay attention. If you're on a different tab, put it back on the correct tab, click on me. Also, if you like this video, you should li like it. I almost said lick it. Subscribe, comment. Follow me on Instagram, you know the bill. Okay, so this video's split into three different parts. We have fit and that, well, that's it, that's the first part. Second, details, which we will get a little obnoxiously into for this pair of jeans for a specific reason that we'll get into. And then three, why do these jeans cost so much? That's the layout, and if you'll follow me now, we'll do this. Okay, so like I said, the fit, I, I messed up. I usually, Levi's recommends you go two sizes bigger in the waist and then two inches longer than you would normally wear. I, it's like one of those things where if someone says, don't touch that stove, it's hot. You're like, okay, that sounds good. And then you put your hand on the stove and you're like, oh, what happened? That's kind of what I did. And it took me three Levi, well, four Levi 501s to realize that Levi's is correct. And that's what you should do. Size up two and length one. Length two inches more. So, you know, one iteration. If you usually wear a 34, get a 36. Although I don't think a 36 exists. So you're kind of screwed then. But if you follow those instructions and you size up two and one in the length, your pants will fit regularly after you get them wet. The reason I'm in the tub doing a tub soak this time instead of, I usually just put them in the hot water, is because these jeans are very tight around the waist and they're very high waisted. And usually what I have to do with final ones when they shrink is pull them really hard and they're really tight. So I'm hoping this will alleviate that issue. And it's also pretty nice to do. If you try them on before you get them wet, they'll be too big. But trust me, after I've done this so many times now, two bigger in the waist. Thank you, welcome to my TED Talk. Also, side note, when you're looking at Levi's 501s in the LVC line, they have the 1954, 57, 66, 70, and we'll get into those in a second. They all fit different, so make sure that you like the general silhouette of the fit before you buy them. The 501 fit is never the same fit. It changes throughout the years. That's why it's always Levi's perfect fitting jean, because Levi's just makes it. Uh -huh, this 
much. This is where it all begins. I hope you brought your mutton chops because we're gonna get filthy. <laughs> I have to look up real quick just what a mutton chop is to make sure. Mutton chop. Oh, it's a sideburn. You never know. Well, I guess some people know. Oh my God, what is he, what is he thinking right now? Is it about mutton chops? Okay, so shave your mustache and slap your face. The denim for the original Levi 501s came from Cone Mills in the United States. That is no more. We will get into that in the last part, but this denim, this 1947 reproduction denim comes from and I'm so sorry if I say this wrong, I'm going to say it every time I say it twice. The way I think it should be said in a different way. The second one, I'll just say it however I want. I think it's Kahara. Kahara. No, wait. Momotaro. Kahara. Kahara Mills in Japan. So after Cone Mills in the United States closed down, Levi's had to find another denim manufacturer that would basically break down their 1947 fabric and say, okay, it's 12 ounces, it has this much slub, this much irregularity, this much hair, it's not singed or anything like that. They have to find someone that will reproduce the exact denim from 1947. And if you're not like a really big denim head, that was an interesting thing to do because they were on old machines where the machines, for example, I believe cone mills had wooden floors so it would shake the loom when the loom was working which would give slight irregularities to the denim. There's a bunch of stuff they had to consider and Levi said that when they were looking for another mill, Kahara Mills was the one that was most down for Flavortown to get everything looking right. Which to me, I feel like if Levi's came to any denim mill anywhere, they'd be like, uh, yeah, sure, we'll figure that out you're gonna be our client. This denim is 12 ounces unsamphorized, so after you get it wet and it shrinks, it is 14 ounces because the fabric is, you know, condensing. Denim that was over here is now over there, which 14 ounces is a medium weight denim. That's pretty good. I feel like usually Levi's samphorized denim, which is, you know, pre-distressed denim or 501s that you don't have to soak or anything, that is 12 ounces. So these technically are heavier. And if we're getting specific, it may be 14.6 ounces. Not 100% sure on that. I would rather go with 14, but I think it could be 14.6. <clears throat> the pants have been washed. And since this is unsamphorized denim, when it gets wet, it shrinks. And since denim is a twill, the denim sometimes twists when it shrinks. And that's called leg twist. And you'll see the selvage line basically should be on the side of the pants. And it goes more towards the center of your leg or just a little bit, whatever. I got some of that. I love that. I love leg twist. People. Uh, after the war weren't excited to get leg twists. They were, I'm assuming, still out of breath from the war, and they were like, oh great, now my pants are twisting. 65 years later, just double check my math, apparently it's 76. Hmm. Couldn't be more thrilled that my pants are twisting. But 1947, light amount of hair throughout. After the first wash, there was more fuzz that came up, just probably it was napped down or something like that. A very, very subtle slub that is still there, just very, very subtle, and basically little or no nep. So it's pretty classic American fabric, which makes sense since they were the pioneers and they probably saw the beginning of their denim making as having a lot of imperfections. So they tried to make it more and more perfect in uniform, no slub, perfectly consistent. As denim became more of an art form and was taken by Japan, they wanted to go back to when looms were low tension or shook and got all this different characteristics. So when you look at modern Japanese fabrics or stuff like that, usually there is more character than a straight American, still traditional fabric. Couldn't find this information anywhere, but I'm pretty sure all this is true. If there isn't something that's true, please correct me in the comments down below. I'll be, you should be commenting anyway. So we have iron buttons, cotton rivets. There's information I can't really find anywhere. I think that Levi's reproduction all uses polyester thread or cotton polyester blend thread. Can't find that information anywhere. Reproduction wise, any pants after 1955 could use polyester thread, but before that, technically, they should be using cotton thread. So I don't know what thread this is on these pants. I would assume, since these are $260 reproduction pants that pride themselves in being exact reproductions, it would be cotton thread, but I did read a lot of forums on the internet that say it is polyester thread. There are hidden rivets in the back pockets, which Levi's, when they were advertising these pants, had to do arrows basically saying, look, they're still hidden rivets. We didn't take them away, we just hid them so they didn't scratch your new 1947 Chevrolet. But the reason I'm pointing those out is because that's where we see the most wear on the back pockets, and it does look like the thread is thinning out there. So it could be cotton, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. Levi's gives basically no information on their website. Okay, so here's the interesting part. I don't know why these cost so much. And you probably know raw denim costs more anyways, but I don't know why these pants cost this much. I do have a theory though, so 
let me vomit on you. Okay, so there's a YouTuber named Stridewise, who's great. He made a video breaking down seven reasons why Japanese jeans are so expensive, and on that video, Naked and Famous commented, and basically the guy that commented, Bezad, broke down the specific reason as to why jeans cost so much, and typically, people in this space thought it would be denim weight, the buttons used, the thread, the rivets, those materials and stuff like that, and Bezad said, yes, of course, those add to the price, but not as much as you think. What you're really paying for is exclusivity. So, with that being said, Levi's is a massive company, the biggest denim producer in the world, the only company that's publicly traded that basically specializes in denim, I think. They're huge, and they have a lot of weight in the denim industry and a big punch in the denim industry. So LVC, their line, that is exclusive, but I would assume that they have a pretty big fan base and they do, although it's exclusive, compared to other exclusive companies like Pure Blue Japan or Oni and stuff like that, they sell a lot more. I'm assuming, I'm not positive. So the LVC line, the LVC 501s, which there's a bunch, used to have their denim sourced in the USA and were cut and sewn in the USA. Now, neither of those things are true. The denim is from Japan and the manufacturing is done in Turkey. Japan denim, I feel like, isn't a reduction in cost when they're going from the United States to Japan, but going from the United States to Turkey and Portugal I believe is a cost-cutting measure. So that's one thing I think they use to cut cost. Also, they're public, so they always have to be pushing revenue forward. Um, I should also say that is nothing against manufacturing in Turkey and Portugal. Their construction is top-notch. It's just not made, I feel like, in spots that people can justify a higher price for yet. So, okay, now if we look at the denim coming from the 1947 Levi's LVC lines, or just the jean itself, this is what we get. 12 ounce denim coming from Kahara Mills, which I'm assuming is bought in bulk, and it's from Levi's, so I'm assuming they can throw their weight around and get a great price. Construction in Turkey, which again, Levi's, I'm assuming again they can get a great price and basically could theoretically run a factory on their own, which I believe they do because Levi says most of their R&D comes out of Turkey. Iron buttons, copper rivets, poly thread, cowhide patch, total cost $260. Now if we look at Sugarcane's exact reproductions of the same jeans, they have a pair of 1947s too, with all the same details, except I believe they use cotton thread, not polyester. Their jeans come in at $200. Made in Japan, fabric in Japan. They are a Japan domestic company, so I don't know if that helps at all. Toyos. Then if we don't look at Sugarcane, we look at a company like the pair of pants I'm wearing right now, LSG Denim. They have a lot more details than Levi's. Different, heavier fabric, which I know doesn't add to the price a lot. Thicker thread, better pocket bags, still hidden rivets, and leather washers on the front buttons of the pants. Their jeans come in at $198 US, which, important to note, because they get their fabric from Japan and they do their construction in Canada. So there's $60 that we basically don't know what's happening with that. And here's what I think is happening. I think they could price these jeans lower. I don't think they're really riding close to the line of profitability, but if they are, this is what I think why. They have this many pair of Levi's LVCs that they launch at certain different times. They have the 1890s, the 1933s, the 1944s, the 1947s, the 1955s, the 1954s, the 1966s, and the 1978s. So they have a lot of different lines of technically the same pair of pants, but since they're all exactly reproductions all the actual hardware itself is different so if we look at the 1954 pants like I said the button on front looks like it's covered in nickel so they can't use that button on these pants so they technically have all those different lines of 501s that can't use the same hardware which makes them a lot more exclusive than it may seem like they are which in that area would then raise the price most companies use the same buttons across all of their products the LBC line can't if they're going to keep it exactly what's the word accurate that's I, that i think that's the reason for the price hike even i don't know the correct term but when we're talking or when we're looking at how far the selvage comes out of the pants you'll see 1954 and you'll see 1947 anyways though that's about it huge announcement coming next week <laughs>